On today's Locked on Thunder podcast, we're joined by Brandon Rabar to discuss Hartenstein's return, should the expectations for this Thunder team change, and more. You are Locked on Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Lockdown Thunder podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. Follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Check out Thunder on SI and AJ Mitchell exclusive is coming up in the morning. Really excited about that. Uh, and a lot of stuff up there from our great team as well. Today, we're joined by Brennan Rabar at Brennan Rabar on Twitter, dailythunder.com, 1077 The Franchise, KREF. Everywhere in the world, you can find Brennan Rabar as well as both of us on OKC Dream Team. But Brandon, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. The Thunder have a four-day break here, and so I feel like you and me are just chilling now. Like, we got some time off, Rylan. Got some time off. Uh, Going to have a couple practices. But other than that, cruising into Feast Week here. And the holiday hoops have already started a bit early. Uh, Tennessee Baylor tonight. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we'll see some more action. Even midday hoops. Uh, Wisconsin playing UCF. So it's a great time of year. Uh, and the Thunder not going to play until that pivotal West Coast trip, which we'll talk about coming up. But let's start here. Isaiah Hartenstein made his return to the floor. His Thunder debut came at home. I think that we both kind of earmarked the Sacramento game and it comes a game early. What did you make of Hartenstein's return? Instant impact both ways, offense, defense. The team looks so much better. He provided energy. Mark Dagnall said that after the game, like just the spark, I think like the morale lift for the team, for the fans, for everyone, just having one Hartenstein, the talent on the court, but Two, having a seven-footer, a big, back on the court to help out with rebounding and defense and rim protection and all those things. But, you know, he came in and instantly made an impact. He didn't start. J-Dub started at center again. um, And the Thunder were were losing those minutes. Hartenstein came in, and they make a big run. And that run continues throughout the end of the first quarter, throughout the start of the second quarter, like that first stretch he had. He was all over the place, rebounds, scoring, assists, everything. And so I think his impact was was huge right away, both on court and then just kind of like the boost it gave confidence to, to the team. Yeah, I mean, it, it was immediate. It was often all 28 minutes were impactful. He was a game high plus 16. I, I don't think that the Thunder win that game without Hartenstein. And I said that on yesterday's recap show, we talked about that on Dream Team, but It just goes to show how much that while they gave great effort and they tried to make it through as best they could, and I think that they did make it through as best they could, sans a stinker in San Antonio uh, with that small ball lineup of no centers, but you just it was not sustainable, and you need someone like Hartenstein who, even whenever he didn't start, once he did get into that game, it allowed you to play more free defensively, and it allowed you to get back to just harassing players on the perimeter and really locking down Portland offensively. Now, the Thunder's offense is not perfect. It needs to be sharpened uh, in this four-day break. But what he can do for you defensively is just as impactful for what he can do offensively. And offensively, he does a lot because he's able to get J-Dub cleaner looks. He's able to create you more possessions and more chances to score. And I know that people are down the Thunder offense right now, but let's be honest. If you give Shea, J-Dub, and these role players who can shoot the ball well, even though they're not shooting it well right now, if you give them more chances to score, that's going to work out in the Thunder's favor more often than not. Yeah, more chances to score. And, you know, they're not going to have to work quite as hard on the defensive end, which means they should have a little bit more juice on the offensive end. Because, you know, They've had to swarm big, just throw bodies and and just kind of fight to survive. And then, you know, rush the shooters and to close out and things like that. Having Hartenstein there uh, will help, I think, the defensive end and provide some some boost. Also, more turnovers again lead to more fast break points, easy points, easy offense, which this team excels at. And I do think that what he provides offensively, as far as, like you said, the screening and the space that he provides, also the little floater he has. Also, the dribble handoff stuff that he can do, uh, you know, his playmaking like popped game one right away. He had an almost an all timer highlight with the back to back behind the back passes to the two Thunder rookies 
Uh, I've already seen Dylan Jones apologize on Instagram to, to iHeart for, for blowing that, that shot. But no, I think that iHeart, you know, Chet is a special talent. Like it's hard to replicate what Chet does. Like his, his threat from the perimeter, what he can do on the inside, how he can defend the rim and how he can go out and guard wings on the perimeter, his switchability. Nobody can really replicate that, but the Thunder do have a very, very good center. Offensively, defensively, impacts both sides of the court. And I think having Hartenstein back is going to be a huge boost to this team. This is a great life insurance policy for Oklahoma City. I mean, this is it's a sad day when you lose Chet. It's a little less sad whenever you have a million dollars coming your way. Uh, and that's what you have with Isaiah Hartenstein. And for two straight years, I think he's going to rescue a team. I mean, you saw what he did uh, for New York a, a year ago whenever they had injuries with, with Mitchell Robinson and what he's doing now for the Thunder and kind of lifting them without Chet Holmgren. His return couldn't have come at a perfect time, you know, because, A, I thought that they were training in the wrong direction against Portland. But more importantly, who you have on the schedule coming up uh, next week with this West Coast swing where you're going to be playing Sabonis potentially, depending on if he's back from that back injury, Anthony Davis, the Warriors. I just think that this is a stabilizing force. And this is a take that, you know, me and Joel Lorenzi have is that I think Isaiah Hartenstein, and this could be crazy, you can call it out, is the best playmaker on this roster when it comes to setting the table, creating advantages for other players. There's a lot of good players on this team. There's a lot of good passers on this team. It's kind of what they've built this thing around. But when it comes to to manipulating defenses, I think Isaiah Hartenstein's the best at it. Ooh, that's a, that's a good take. I I, th I think he is in the discussion. There's an argument to be had for Hartenstein. I think for Shea as well, just because of the gravity that Shea has, and and it opens up so many playmaking opportunities. And then I think J Dub, you know, he hasn't had to do a whole lot of that. He's kind of been a secondary playmaker, and I think there's still a lot of untapped potential. But certainly, Hartenstein's playmaking pops, especially for his size. Like when you're looking at big men who are playmakers in the league. I mean, obviously Jokic, number one, stamp it. But after Jokic, is Hardenstein the second best playmaking center? He could be. Like, he's that good. And I think that he's going to just be such a boost to this team from his playmaking as well. It it was the thing that this Thunder team focused on in the offseason was, was playmaking. Sam Presti said it in his exit interview last year when he was talking about the Mavs. He, he went back to it a few times. What he noticed more than anything else was the passing and playmaking across the team and how big a difference that means in the playoffs. And who do they go out and get? They trade for Alex Caruso, and they trade for Isaiah Hartenstein. And Isaiah Hartenstein, one of his best skills is being a playmaker from the center position. And you win with the pass and not the dribble, and that was a, a, a kind of a crutch phrase, but a point of emphasis for Sam throughout the summer. And he's done that with his acquisitions as well. So coming up, we'll talk about this West Coast trip. We're also going to discuss, do the Thunder need to readjust their expectation level given their run of injuries? But first, I want to tell you right now, but our good friends over at Chime.com slash NBA. Go check out Chime.com slash NBA today because we've all been hit at a point and we all have realized that we need to find a way to make serious money moves. Take control of your financial success and goals by using Chime checking accounts, that which gives you features like no maintenance fees, fee-free overdraft up to $200, and getting paid up to two days earlier with direct deposit. So go sign up today at chime.com slash locked on NBA and go check them out today because whenever you do, you can be up to date on chime and have a, and be a spotted member, which is incredible. It's, it's created over $30 billion for their customers. Friends also give friends a boost for eligible members to get complimentary boost to their temporary increase of friends. Spot me limit. You can go check it out today and give yourself a boost, your friend a boost for that temporary raise in your limit because the spot me is critical. The no fee free, the free free overdraft of up to $200 is incredible to help you get by go check them out today and see how it works you set up a direct deposit with your chime account after a qualifying deposit of 200 plus dollars chime will notify you to enroll in spot me 
with the activation debit with an active debit card chime will spot you 200 bucks when you exceed your balance go check it out today your next direct deposit is applied to your negative balance chime will never change uh, or charge fees or interest for using spot me go check it out today and make sure you do because you can make your fall finances a little greener by working toward your financial goals with chime open your account in two minutes at chime.com slash nba that's chime.com slash nba feel like progress we're back on the lockdown thunder podcast on the lockdown podcast network your teams every day here with brian rabar at daily thunder for him at brian rabar on twitter and k ref 1077 the franchise in a sharp shooting menace on the court as well uh brandon we came into this year with pretty clear-cut expectations we both had the thunder in the top of the west we both had the thunder coming out of the west uh, and and it seemed like they were they would be able to cruise to back to back number one seeds. However, unlike last year where they had supreme injury luck, it's turned in a big way and a bad way for the Thunder. Losing Kinrich in the preseason, getting him back, Jay Will in the preseason, Isaiah Hartenstein in the preseason, getting him back, and now without Chet Holmgren for a sizable chunk of the regular season, they've weathered the storm exceptionally well. Considering all those factors, the fact that they're still tied for first place in the West is huge. But moving forward, do your expectations change at all or outlook change at all for this Thunder team? Yeah, I think that expect change, expectations changed initially when you knew that Isaiah Hartenstein was going to miss 15 to 20 games. You knew that this is still going to be a really, really good team. But, you know, maybe if you thought they were a 63-win team, you change it to 60 wins. Okay, well, they started off really, really good. And you knew that Isaiah Hartenstein was coming back soon. So you're like, well, maybe they can get those like 63, 64 wins. And then you lose Chet Holmgren and it's such a big blow. And like you said, all these other like kind of injuries here and there that are popping up like Caruso and Joe. And like, you know, these are good, impactful, you know, role players that the Thunder are losing for games here and there. Hopefully Caruso and Joe are back after the break. I think you adjust the expectations time just because to me, Chet Holmgren is such a, such a huge piece of this entire puzzle. I think that Isaiah Hartenstein is really, really good. And this Thunder team is still going to be really, really good without Chet Holmgren. And I still think that they will be in the fight for the number one seed until Chet comes back. I don't know if they'll be the number one seed. And I guess that's where my expectation would change some. Like if this was a fully healthy Thunder team, I'd be like, yeah, it's the number one seed in the West. This is easily the most talented team. So they're going to be the, the one seed in the West. Without Chet, I think they're in the fight for the one seed. They could be the one seed. They could be the two seed. They could be the three seed. Um, so I guess expectations would change from that standpoint. So where? So before the year, we both kind of had a no-brainer decision on them being the one seed. When do you stop using your brain now? With with what we know, it's obviously not the one seed. It's it's. I don't think it's the two seed, is it? Of like where it's like, yeah, they're going to be the two seed no matter what. Like where, where's the floor, I guess, for this Thunder team in your mind, given the circumstances? It's so weird because the West is weird. Like it's hard to, to like, nobody would have thought that it would be the Thunder and Warriors at the top of the West, you know, 15, 16 games into the season. The Lakers would be right there. The Suns were there until KD was out and they're dropping a bunch of games, but then KD's coming back and like, are the Suns going to be one of the top teams when they're fully healthy? The Wolves and the Mavs are struggling. Like they're in like the play-in. Uh, you know, portion of the standings right now. All that said, so it's difficult to kind of pinpoint who the top teams are. And from that standpoint, I still think the Thunder are one of the top teams. I guess I would say <sighs> top four still, like home court advantage, I would I would say is the floor. Give it provided health, you know, like, you know, if, if SGA and, and all these guys, if, if the roster stays intact until Chet comes back, I'll say top four. Yeah, you got to knock on wood with uh, the injury luck moving forward. But uh, so that's where I'm at in the regular season. I, I I still think with all of these circumstances, the Thunder will be a home court advantage team without question. Like I don't even use my brain functions for that. Uh, I still think that they have a chance to be the top seed in the West. Like that's how good I think this team is. It, it, as Hartenstein gets integrated, if you can get Caruso and Joe back in short order and then turn injuries off for the rest of the year, uh, if, if you if you kind of maintain now normal injury luck after having an awful spell of injury luck, 
then I, I would say that they're going to be in the fight for the one seed. I don't really think that this team will slip lower than four in the, the seeding. The expectations, though, for me have changed a bit when it comes to the postseason because even if you have like the name of the of the Holmgren jersey on the court, I still think you have to give this season a, like another mulligan. Whereas like preseason, if they lost in the second round, there'd be way more people than that that were brutally disappointed by that outcome. If if they fall in the second round of the postseason, to me, it's it's going to be way more contextualized of how are they looking. Like I think that this team should still win in the first round series. But if they fall in the second round, is is it because Chet Holmgren is just rusty and he's not playing like Chet Holmgren? Is it because, you know, of a different factor where it's like maybe Chet comes back and he doesn't miss a beat and then you still lose and you and you wonder then at a at a different point. So the worry concerns for me change based upon that injury of like how does he look when he first comes back? And I think that coming back from a hip fracture would be unfair to just say, yeah. I don't care if you come back on March 30th, it's still championship or bust. Right. You can't expect Chet to come back right away and be the Chet Holmgren that we saw, you know, in the defensive player of the year discussion, the first, you know, 10 games of this season, the the Chet Holmgren that looked like he was going to absolutely be a first time all-star this season in his sophomore season. I don't think you can expect, I don't think that's fair to expect that from Chet. That said, we know Chet Holmgren. We know that he's going to hit this hard as far as his rehab goes he's going to do everything he can to get himself into game shape and to be ready and the team you know expects chet holmgren to be back there is some of the unknown when is it going to be and you know how long is it going to take him to ramp up how long is it going to take him to get into game shape so i agree with you there are a lot of unknowns when it comes to to chet coming back the when and the how and and what shape and all those things so given all that I would agree that the expectations for the postseason should change a little bit as well. That doesn't mean that they can't go on a championship run. They could. And if Chet could come back and he gets a month ramp up, a month and a half ramp up, and he's he's looking like himself again as a playoff start, sure, absolutely. Um, it could happen. But I do think that that expectations could change a little bit now. Yeah, it, it just preseason, it just felt more black and white of like if they lose in the second round, that's when the disappointment creeps in. To me, the disappointment doesn't creep in at all, really. It just depends on how they're looking to kind of see uh, when or or what looks disappointing uh, when it comes to the postseason outcome. Now, you could get the, the miracle situation where everybody's clicking, everybody's ready to go, and you go in a championship this year because this team is so talented, it is so deep that if you can just get home grid healthy and you can get this team rocking and rolling, you can still go win that championship. It's just not to the point anymore to me where it has to be the conference finals or better for this team to be considered successful. Uh, I think that the circumstances now kind of make you view things in different light and in different contexts uh, for this season. So it's exciting that uh, there's still a lot of hope and, and, and contention status around this team, but we're eight to 10 weeks away from his return to play plan. Not, and I think that people might get confused with that of like a return to the court as in playing games. Like that's whenever he's going to start really ramping up uh, his return to play protocol, not whenever he's going to start jumping center uh, to start games and move Jada out of that spot. So I just think that we've got to give this team way more grace than we ever planned to because of that injury. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. And the thing is, this is such an incredibly talented team. If Chad comes back at even like 80% of himself, and kind of works himself up as the playoffs are going, like mid playoffs, he's getting a little bit better and a little bit more into game shape and things like that. I th I think given you know health across the team, if that happens, uh, this team is so incredibly talented. You know, Shea is a top five player in the league, MVP front runner, and J Dub. I think we can both agree we've talked about it is on an all star track this season. You've got Hartenstein, you've got Caruso, Dort, all these great role players. Uh, so I do think that the X factor is Chet and when and how he comes back as far as like the, the championship aspirations for the team. Coming up, West Coast trip. It could go a long way in defining these expectations. We'll talk about that. Plus, which role players need to step up for Oklahoma City?
But first, one say right now, but good friends over at Game Time, go check out Game Time today. And whenever you do, you'll see my favorite ticketing app because Game Time is perfect. That is perfect for NBA, especially because they're the last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And at the NBA level, you know, the injury report comes out, guys are questionable, probable, doubtful. And maybe that's your favorite player. Maybe that's your entire reason for going. You can wait it out until the bitter end to know exactly that player's status before buying your ticket. And you know, you'll get the lowest prices. How confident is game time that you're going to get those lowest prices? Well, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you somehow find a lower price ticket. I also love the view from your seat. Many of you comment that you're coming to OKC for the first time to watch this team. And so where should you go eat? Where, where should you sit? You can get the view from your seat at Game Time. And my favorite part is the all-in pricing. Whenever you toggle this feature on, you get everything up front. There's no surprise fees at checkout. How many times have you gone to go buy a ticket and it looks five bucks and then you get to the end and it's 50 bucks and you're just like, what happened? You're not going to experience that at game time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets at game time uh, and then go to the game time app, create your account and use code lockdown NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms and conditions do apply. Again, create your account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off your first purchase. Go download the game time app today to get started. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Brandon, West Coast trip. They have uh, Sacramento on Monday, uh, Golden State Wednesday, the Lakers on Friday. They finish up with Houston, then come back for the Utah Jazz here in the Paycom Center for one of the few December home games right now uh, until we figure out what's going on with the NBA Cup to see if they're going to go make it big in Vegas, like Buck Owens. Great song, by the way. <laughs> it's a great song. I, 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 let me tell you, if I have to make the trip to Vegas for the NBA Cup, I will be playing that song on a loop for the whole flight. Uh, it, it's just a it, fun fact about that song. Uh, is actually first big in Dallas by uh, Jerry Stafford. Uh, not, a, not a great tune, I'll admit. But <laughs> he did license it to Buck Owens. Uh, for the for the ability to change it to big in Vegas. Jerry Stafford, though, a behind-the-scenes uh, musical writer who's attributed for a lot of good stuff. Uh, anyway, NBA Cup, a lot on the line whenever you play the Lakers. Like, that'll define your NBA Cup run. Uh, if you lose to the Lakers, it's, it's very slim that you go to Vegas. And if you win, you're in the driver's seat to go to Vegas. But speaking of the, of the West Coast trip as a whole, to me, Friday night, when the final buzzer sounds, which could be Saturday night, our time, uh, when the final buzzer sounds, you will know the new barometer for this Thunder team. If you somehow go two and one or better in this three game stretch on the on the far west coast, yeah, I mean it, it's back to like, hey, this team should be you know in in firm contention for the one seed. If you labor your way with Hartenstein back to a one and two or worse record, then you go, well, this team is gonna is going to just need to be kind of like what Dallas did a little bit, where like. Dallas just got in. They, they, they didn't have home court. They, they were the fifth seed. They got in. They played their best basketball in the playoffs and made it to the finals. Like, it's not as though your season's over uh, because we've seen seeding matter less and less in the, in the modern NBA. But it, it's also not like a, a, a situation where you're still expecting them to be a, a top seed. Yeah, I think this West Coast trip is going to say a lot because these are some heavy hitters. You got Sacramento and DeMonte Sabonis. De'Aaron Fox has been playing really well. They added DeMar DeRozan, uh, Malik Monk if he plays. Like this is a, a really, really talented team. And having Hartenstein back is huge for this trip, by the way, because you're playing Sabonis, you're playing Draymond Green, you're playing Anthony Davis. Uh, so his return is coming at a really, really good time. Uh, I think that Lakers game is obviously big because – Last year, the Lakers were the one West team that had a better head-to-head -head record than the Thunder. Like the Thunder either had an, an equal or better record than every team that they played in their head-to-heads. So I'm really curious to see that Lakers matchup. And then, of course, Warriors Thunder is always fun. And, you know, the Warriors got the Thunder in OKC, the game that the Chet went down. Of course, the Thunder made a huge run to make it close. I think that you know, the, the air got sucked out of the, the arena. Morale was down. Then the bench made a run. I'm really curious to see that rematch. But, yeah, I, I think that these three games, these are three playoff contenders. And the Lakers and Warriors look like two of the best teams in the West, which I think is a surprise. And then the Kings, uh, firmly a, a playoff contender. So I agree with you. Two and one would be 
would be huge. And one and two, you're like, okay, well, you know, this is still a really, really good team, but there may be, you know, this is going to be a fight. So, like, yeah. I, I want to give you an advanced uh, shout out if, if they do beat Golden State and bark on the Warriors court. You'll be, I mean, you should take your wife out to dinner. The amount of money you're going to make on X that night, posting the bark uh, from Golden State, if they're able to win, I'm hoping for that to happen for your benefit. Uh, uh, you guys can really go to mahogany. You guys can do something nice uh, if that happens. Uh, I just I just really believe that like this, this week's going to matter. And I know that people really don't get into standing talks for a while, but, this, the, but the thing that I look at is like, these games all count. We just saw a year ago how the, the difference in the three seed to and the one seed was a tiebreaker because of a lucky shot from the Spurs. Like you could have made that game up in November. Like, like these games all are weighted the exact same in the standings. Uh, so it's just like everything will come down to tiebreakers, head to heads. And you mentioned Golden State is already plus one on Oklahoma City. Like those tiebreakers are what allowed the Thunder to be the one seed. Uh, in last year's playoffs. So I just think that this week, seeing how you stack up with these guys, and of course you end it with you with uh, Houston who's playing good basketball, seeing how you stack up with the, these teams, I think will we'll go a long way in, in deciding how you're able to maneuver through the rest of this season. Because there's a chance that in the regular season, and this is with all due respect to Chet Holmgren, but in the regular season, the, the drop-off in terms of win-losses isn't that significant if you if, if if Hartenstein plays the way we expect him to play and then you're really sitting pretty for integrating Holmgren back and, and getting all systems go yeah I completely agree and you know like we've said this is a really really good team and replacing you basically last year this team won 57 games well there was some internal development obviously Jada looks like he's taking a leap and you've added A.J. Mitchell and Dylan Jones. Other than that, you're swapping out Chet Holmgren and Josh Giddy for Isaiah Hartenstein and Alex Caruso. So I still think that this is a really, really good team. I don't know how many games they're going to win. I don't know what seed they're going to get. They're going to get Chet back eventually. Uh, so this Thunder team, I, I still think that that the excitement for this team should still be sky high. Uh this is a team that's going to win a lot, a lot of games, but I agree with you. You know, when you got all these playoff teams in a row that are in the West, they matter. That NBA cup game, I think matters to the team and to fans. Also, what's nice is the December schedule actually kind of softens up a bit. So it'd be really nice to, to get some wins on this West coast trip and, and to kind of get those into the bank and maybe pad that lead in the standings a bit, because December has the potential to be a really good month for the Thunder. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to see how this all develops and progresses uh, for Oklahoma City. To close the loop on Terry Stafford, he did write uh, Amarillo by Morning for George Strait, which is a great song around here. Uh, and his most popular song was actually an Elvis cover. So you can see why uh, he's got my heart. Anyway, role players <laughs> have been a big topic in Oklahoma City uh, with P.J. Washington going off. The Spurs had guys pop off like Keldon Johnson. To me, the reason why you're not seeing Thunder role players pop off is because they're not as aggressive uh, at looking for their opportunities to score the way that those guys are. Who are you looking for to step up as a role player in terms of helping this team offensively? I think Isaiah Joe, um, just because of his three-point shooting ability, his gravity, the spacing he provides. You know, he's he's missed the last couple of games. The Thunder have tried to kind of replicate what Joe does with, with Adam Flagler. And I, I see the vision. I get why they're doing it, but Isaiah 31 Joe, points tonight for the blue, by the way, Adam Flagler. Nice way to go, Adam. Nice. So he was due. Um, but Isaiah Joe though, uh, he is a special three point shooter and he commands a lot of respect. And, you know, the team as a whole has kind of struggled from the three point line and the offense has kind of struggled a bit. And the free throw rate is has kind of been an ongoing storyline. I think that if the Thunder can get to the line more and if they can see some of the three-pointers start dropping, that changes this offense a lot. And we've already talked about what Hartenstein can do on the offensive end to help. But but if I had to pinpoint one, um, I would say Isaiah Joe. I'm going to go with Casey Wallace, and it's not about his three-point shooting. Because to me, there's not much to say about his three-point shooting. 
I don't think that the added muscle has hurt his jump shot. I just think the balls aren't going in right now. And, and he's taking quality looks. He's taking good chances. What I think he should step up in doing is the flashes we've seen from him developmentally as an on-ball offensive player, whether it be to pass on the drive and kick or to go to the rim. Those things have to be louder and more often uh, in this stretch of the West Coast swing. We'll see if that's actually the case. Brandon, what are you up to on these off days? What are you up to over at Daily Thunder? Just what's going on with you? Yeah, so on these off days, I'm gonna uh, I'm actually writing a piece on the Thunder DJ MC1. Uh, yeah, he's he's got a really really cool story. He's not just like a Thunder DJ. He does a lot like in uh, the Native American community, and he kind of has a history in OKC hip hop. And he is a DJ for Nike. He's won an MTV VMA. There's lots of things about the Thunder DJ that people don't know about. So I'm kind of working on a story that I'm going to put out on Daily Thunder here in the next few days. I cannot wait for that. You can go read my AJ Mitchell exclusive tomorrow, mo Friday morning. So it's already out for most of you listening to this. Uh, Brandon, thank you for joining us. We'll have you back after the West Coast swing to kind of see where the chips have fallen for the Thunder. Go check him out at Brandon Bar on Twitter, dailythunder.com and 1077 The Franchise. Brandon, thanks for joining us. Until next time. Be good and be good to one another.